Hello and welcome to the September edition of Young People Doing Big Things. Our guest for today is a 15-year-old Texas who started her software development journey in 2017. She is the co-founder of The Girls Techie and she is based in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sumaya Adewite. And now, a little bit about Esther. Ed Softer Software Development Academy is a software training academy based in Lagos. The academy runs a three-month program that trains students to be able to build simple applications. Without further ado, let's make welcome our guest, Sumaya Adebwite, and our host, Enoch Olisa. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Young People Doing Big Things. My name is Inokolisa, and I'm happy to have you here. For those who are joining us for the first time, you're most welcome to today's edition. And a quick one about Young People Doing Big Things. It's an interview that's a series of interview sessions that is focused on showcasing what young people in the tech space are building. So on the show, we'll discuss with them, hear about how they started, know more about their journey so far, what they are currently building and their aspirations for the future. It's powered by Ed Software Software Development Academy. We are a software training institute based in Lagos, Nigeria. Once again, you're welcome and I'm happy to have you here. For the September edition, we'll be speaking with Sumaya Adegbite. She's a 15-year-old software developer that started out in 2017. She's also the co-founder of The Girls Techies. So on today's edition of the program, we're going to hear about how she started her journey so far and, of course, her aspiration for the future. Sumaya, you're most welcome to the program. Hello. Thank you guys for having me. Okay, um, Sumaya. Our usual first question is very simple and straightforward. Can we get to know you, your age, and your educational background? All right. So, hello, everyone. My name is Maya Adebutir, and I'm a 15 year old software developer from Lagos, Nigeria. And um, what I do, um, I'm a mobile and web developer, all right? Sometimes I build mobile and web applications. So, I finished from high school last year. And I'm currently um, attending classes for some exams I'll be taking soon. That's the A levels and the ACT classes. Okay, that's fine. You're most welcome once again. Okay, um, tell us when you you started coding. All right, so I started coding. Uh, I started coding 2017. Was I think around early 2017 because I I think I was around nine then. But when I started coding, I mean, the motivation was not that there. And I used to attend classes um, today, not attend classes tomorrow, but I wasn't like taking it serious, right? So when I when I was 10 years old, all right, besides the 10, that was when I became serious with coding. After watching the video of a nine-year-old um, girl who built an um, app that could detect lead, the amount of lead in water, so her name is Jitan Rao, and she really inspired me because at the time she built the app, she was also nine years old. And I was like, since she could build an app at age nine, and I'm also nine, that means I was also 10. That means I could also do, I could also do something better. And like, okay, that was what actually inspired me to become serious at age 10. Okay, that's nice to hear. I mean, you've answered our question, which was what made you start coding. That's nice to hear. Let's hope... Let's hope somebody who is also um, watching it, who has either started and is not taking it very seriously, or who is contemplating on starting, takes that decision to start. That's nice to hear from you, Sumaya. Okay, um, let's also know your stack. Like, what are the software development tools that you're proficient in? 
Okay, so for the software development, to and proficiency. For my mobile development, I use um, Flutter and Dart programming. And for web development, I, I, I use um, HTML, CSS, and Mary. That's MongoDB as the database, Node.js, and Express.js, and also React. I also use um, Firebase. I use um, GitHub, all right? I use Git, I use GitHub. I guess every developer would actually use that. All right, so I guess these are the languages I'm proficient in. Like okay. Okay, and that's nice to hear. Okay, so can I mean you use a I mean a bunch of tools? Can you can we have an insight to how your journey has been, like your journey of learning, from the time you said, okay, I'm going to take this serious. What was the first tool you learned? Second tool, the third tool. Yeah. All right. Um, um, another thing I actually forgot to mention was everything also started from school. From school, I actually got into the tech world around age five, because from school we did this Microsoft packages. That's the Microsoft Word, the PowerPoint animations. Then I moved on to learning two D animations, three D animations, then video editing, and also some bits of graphic design. And that's why I have like a little bit of experience in designing. All right. Then when I when I was around that age nine to ten, that's when I started coding. And my first language I learned was Python. But then our instructor advised that I switch to learning something else, right? Because I wasn't doing well with that. So I started with. Then I began to learn um Scratch. So Scratch programming is a fun and easy um let's see is the fun and easy programming for kids, all right? And I actually enjoyed that because, you know, the interface is kind of... Yeah, um, yeah, be sure, yeah. yeah. So I then, after some, after some bit, some time of learning Scratch, I started with, um, I started learning web development. That was HTML and CSS. I did that for some time with JavaScript. I did that for some time before I then moved on to learning Node.js, all right? But... After learning Node.js for a while, it wasn't long I started Flutter and that. So I gave like, I gave, um, I was interested on learning Flutter that. That was around um, 2020 during the pandemic. That was when I started learning Flutter and that programming. So I was giving my attention to Flutter and that and less to Node.js. That's the main stack. And I've done, uh, and for, like for the past few years, I've been in Flutter and that programming. I like, Few months ago, that's when I just went back to um, you know working with Node.js and Mern in full. Basically, basically. So, summary of the journey, okay. you know, my journey. I mean, yeah, I mean that has been quite a journey. According to those who are watching and are not very tech um, inclined, that's some software development jingle. I mean that's been quite a journey and that's quite interesting. Okay, um, I mean so, some of our viewers would like to know. What has been your highest point in software development? Like in your journey, what has been that wow moment that you're like, I'm very happy I embarked on this journey? Wow. Okay. I guess the first wow moment was actually, you know, inspiring other girls. From the organization I co founded with one of my friends, the Girls Tech, you know, like the first workshop we actually had was. Um, was me training girls in mobile and web development, all right? And like, that was my first wow moment, you know, and I'm also able to inspire other girls because I was the one who took them on the mobile workshop. So, you know, being able to inspire other girls, you know, so like, um, also want to learn coding and give them that zeal and courage. So that's one of the wow moments. And I guess the second was also me seeing a particular problem and actually finding solutions to it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's nice to hear. And let let me also ask this one to put on top of that. Would you say software development has opened doors for you? Has it opened a bunch of opportunities? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Software development actually opened like doors for me. Lots and lots of opportunities. I've been able to meet. Lots of other people who are doing great in the tech career or the tech ecosystem. I've also been I, when I, initially when I started, I wasn't that good at public speaking. I know this keynote speaking, 
but then I, I at least now I can, I can actually speak and you know that confidence it's now there and apart from the network I've been able to meet lots of like-minded friends and I mean there are just lots and lots of opportunities such as the has opened to me okay that's good then um I mean, it's been an interesting um, journey. I'm glad to hear it's um, open, it's, um, um, open doors for you. Which will lead me to my next question. One of the challenges people have before they learn software development is the fear that um, it's hard. So you are facing a young girl now or a young boy and he, she or he um, asks you, is software development hard? Is coding hard? What will your response be? Oh, that's a very, um, like, I get asked that question a lot. Um, most of my response is usually, it actually depends on you. That's, like, the answer. For some, like, when I started with Python, uh, my instructor actually had to advise I switched to another team. And some would also start with that same Python, and they're also going to, like, get it. All right? So it actually depends on you and also your determination, you know, the zeal to learn. Sometimes you you are actually capable of learning it, but probably because you're not motivated or you've not seen something that's going to push you to like just move forward and take that one single step that's just going to put you into it, all right? So it actually depends on you, depends on who you are. That will determine if coding is um, easy or hard. Uh, because like, uh. you know, there's a scenario whereby someone is just getting into the tech industry and they're like, oh, oh, I saw I wasn't fit for coding and that's why I switched to designing. So it actually depends on you. So once you know yourself, you are able to, um, you're also able to, you know, determine how you want to learn. Let's say, for example, for someone who's interested in game development and the, like someone loves games and someone would love to build games. There's no, if that kind of person would be interested in game development, and you see because of the passion, the person's passion or love for, you know, playing games, the person that zeal to also build his own games would also be there. So the response is, it's actually, it depends on you, on who you are. On you. On you. That's nice to hear. I hope somebody watching this can fly with that. It depends on you. Thanks so much, Sumaya. On to the next one. One of the things I believe is that doing things usually is um, easy when somebody who has done it shows you the way yes so the question is do you have mentors have, have there been people who have held your hands and shown you the way have there been people you have looked up to in your journey so far yes i have lots and lots of mentors from my school instructors to my dad to so so i have lots and lots of mentors and i guess um this was just mentors that were um, that actually like Sumaya. You have to do this. Have you attended class today? They are like you know having mentors can be very good as they actually they check up on you and they keep you in check. So I have lots and lots of mentors. Okay, okay, that's nice to hear. And for those who are also watching this, I think you can take something away from that. You need people to. As she said, puts you in check. Sometimes you may just want to lose hope or just relax. You need somebody to ginger you. You need somebody to ask you, ask you and questions. Or rather, you need somebody to encourage you. Nice to know you have mentors. And, and, and of course, I'm not surprised. Okay, let's now go to some of um, the fun stuff we tech is love to talk about. Um, what's your dream computer? Do you have a dream computer? Like a dream PC? A dream PC. Uh, <laughs> that's actually funny, right? I think I'm actually cool with any PC. I'm actually, as for me, I'm actually, I'm not a fan of, you know, you know, of these, probably this fancy um laptops or computers. I mean, any computer that is working fine and it's not going to lag because, you know, my mobile development actually gets fed up. Like the system I used to use, um, if it's lagging, like it's not efficient enough. So um, whatever system doesn't lag and like it's just fine and okay, I think I'm cool with any PC, okay. any computer. Okay, that's nice to hear. Just walk and let me get it done. Yeah. Okay, let's now move to a uh, company. 
what will be your dream company? Like, what's that company you would like to work for in the future? Yeah, company I would like to work for the future. Uh, yeah. Probably Google. Probably uh -huh. Google. I mean, why does anybody want to work for Google? Why? Just why? I don't know, but I mean, you know, seeing people, I just got a job at Google as a software engineer, and oh gosh, I mean, that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's nice to hear. Google is uh, Google is uh, actually a very great company. I've done a whole lot of findings um, about their internal uh, culture. It resonates with just I think the way tech is. I mean, yeah. it's actually a, a very good company with a very cool work culture. That's nice to hear. Now let's talk about some of the things you have built, and we can you, you can go into a bit of your plans for the. Um, the future. So let's talk about the girls' techie. So what does the girls' techie do, and what does your the plan for um for the future um look like for you? Yeah. All right. So um the girls' techie it's a non profit organization, and we like say in simple sentence, our um uh, it's just about bridging bridging the gender gap in STEM. All right. And this is um, for young girls like me, you know, from my experience of starting at a very young age, uh, I mean, when I was very, um, around 10 years old, all right, I used, I used to attend um, tech events, okay, so just GDG events, whenever GDG organizes events, I usually attend, and whenever I attended, there are females actually, there are females there, but like these females are way older than me, and I mean, I'm just 10, so these are actually the things that inspired me to also like start, one of the things that inspired me to actually start this, that, this organization. So we create a community for young girls within a specific age, and that is 13 to 18, or probably less in the tech space. So that community, you know, you're free to interact, you know, intimate, intimidated. All right. So that's one of the things that actually inspired me to start the Girls Decade with my friend. All right. And um, like I said earlier, uh, in simple words, we are just about bridging the gender gap in STEM. And our mission is to connect, empower, and inspire these young girls in STEM. Okay. We say we want to create a community for young girls within the ages of 13 to 18, but we are limiting it to tech. All right. And and if you look at girls my age, around that 10 years old, most of them are not that interested in tech. They are not in tech already. So before we create this community, we, they, are, they actually have to be trained. They have to um, at least have a, um, a solid, uh, some background of this technical skill. So as we're creating this community, these girls are also being taught in different aspects of tech. Like when we started or when we launched last year, we launched by organizing um, a physical workshop on mobile and web development. And these attendees were actually noted. And when we organized our cohort, we reached out to them to like further the learning they already started during the workshop. So in the cohort, it's, it's, also, it's, it's lasted for two months on like these young girls were taught in different tracks, ranging from front-end development to back-end development to data science and, um, and you are UX, all right? Actually taught that we're trained in this cohort, some of them to work um, in the organization. And they were also one of the, we've also been able to build a community as of this people. Okay. That okay. okay, so that's nice to hear. So, I mean, how does this fit into your plans for, um, for the future? Or more generally, what are your plans for the future? Oh, okay. Uh, like our main plan for the future is the girls' tech should be um, everywhere. That's there should be a, a community for young girls within that specific age range. I, I said earlier, which is 13 to 18. We should okay. be recognized. As, um, you can start at, at any age. Okay. At any okay. age. Girls coming up. Because another problem we actually identified when we were doing our research was. One of the reasons girls were not interested in, in this tech was because they didn't see people in their age range or age bracket to inspire them. I mean, a lot of 
sometimes when we say um, females in tech, they're usually women. I mean, people who are way, who are older. And let's say for a young girl who's just watching, she's like, oh, it's because she's older. That's why she's able to uh, do this tech thing. But when they see there's a community of, uh, I mean, young girls who are doing great in the tech space, they're inspired. And I, I think, I think that's. That's the key thing we need because, like, tech is for everyone. It's not limited for a particular gender yeah. or for a age or yeah. So that's, that's it. nice to hear. That's nice to hear, um, Sumaya. Um, it's been nice speaking with you on a range of tech-related um issues. Let's now move on to business and the nation at large. Okay, tech, oh, yeah. looking around you, what societal problems do you feel Nigeria has? that tech can solve or software solutions can be of help? Hmm. I think the, the major problem, one of the major, pro, pro, major problem, all right, let me correct that. One of the major problems we actually, we are facing in my country, Nigeria, is um, we don't have, like our data, it's poor. And that's because, and I mean, if this data, it's not, if, it, if it's not, if it's poor and it's like, it's not correct, there's no way planning would go home. There's no way tracking would be. There's, there will be insecurity, there will be crimes because there's not actually proper data for this. So one of the, um, one of the ways um, tech would actually come to assist and it's one of the, the um, one of the things I actually have or I hope to solve in the future or I hope to solve or start even soon is um, if we could have something that could track the um, total number, like the total population of everyone in the country. Because if we, is this data that would actually be used to plan and know? Because let me tell you one interesting fact: the only news we see online, like in the TV or in the media, is those that are actually probably where it happened. Um, there was an influence probably someone's influence. I mean, people die every day due to some facts that are not even known that can't be traced in my country, Nigeria, all right? And I mean, this is a really serious issue we actually need to track. And one of the um, plans, because there was a time I was asked to come and speak at um, Lagos State University on the impact of artificial intelligence and data science in, pol in politics. And one of the things where, um, I was able to reason out was during my research was, um, if we had this planning, the whole insecurity issue, I'm uh, sorry, I'm uh, sorry for that. If we had this proper data planning, um, the whole insecurity issue we face wouldn't be there. And that's because uh, um, with this data, we are able to track. So let's take a scenario, because I live in Lagos State. So there was a time, there was an uproar on the um, internet a um, few months ago about a girl that was... Um, I was kidnapped in a uh, government owned um yeah government owned bus at the BRT. All right. I mean, and this is a government owned um bus. But because of without um proper tracking and proper data, let's say this data, there's uh there's an office somewhere that you know tracks everyone's movement. Because I think China actually has that. As you're leaving an organization, as you're leaving a company, there's uh there's uh there's uh camera that's actually scanning everyone's face and it's monitoring everyone's movement. Let's say with proper data or planning, with proper data, as the girl bought the bus, because there's already um, uh, a place where people are, that has collection of data of people, as the girl, they could easily trace the girl as yeah. the girl was moving. And I mean, because of the already tracing the girl, they could um, reach out to uh, the 911 or to the emergency people to rescue the girl and probably would be saying something else now. So I think the problem, one of the um, core issues we are facing, it's, it's data. And I think AI, artificial intelligence, is there to solve this. And, I, I, and I've always had this issue because there was a time I also attended back then in high school. We attended a tech program where we are asked to, um, we also asked a question related to this and how we could solve it. And what I came up with was, if we could have, well, let's say, drone, something like drone, that to count the uh, number of people in a particular region, that's, let's say for Lagos, for an example. So as it counts, 
as it comes to stores your face, your, your face somewhere. You know the whole process of how fingerprint works. So yeah. that's how it's also going to work. So it's going to save your um scan your face and store it somewhere and also your information. And it's not going to like count you again. So I think with that, we are we would be able to um get like the total population of everyone in the country oh and that because we had the case of during the COVID nineteen. So I used to, during the COVID nineteen, you know, it was lockdown. So I, I like I I was very conversant with the media. I usually um watch um uh, what yeah listen to news. I, I like they said palliatives were given out to the um less privileged. All right, but it's something that this palliative didn't reach some people, and that's okay, because yeah. um, once they actually give out this palliative, they don't know the um they don't know the um the, it's still the same thing about data. Let's say yeah. they already know all. We have the, um, let's say, uh, a total number of people in Nigeria earning um, less than this, because I think that was actually one of the criteria. then I think, depending yeah, on the amount that, in your bank. Uh, the palliatives should reach some set of people. Yeah, so, I mean, if I'm, yeah. if I'm understanding, uh, yeah, with um, data, data will just help proper planning so that, I mean, it helps us uh, achieve things just like you said like a proper um, distribution and allocation of resources okay thanks so much um sumaya i mean that's very very insightful i mean not once not twice i've had thoughts on how proper data collection and processing can help solve society issues that's a very insight insightful answer and hopefully in future let's hope you develop some solutions around that okay so just some last two questions so that we can be done in the next two minutes what advice just one advice what advice do you have for somebody thinking of going into software um, de um development what's the advice you give that person all right my advice would be just start. if you are watching this right now you're like oh you're having a rethink you know what once you finish watching this just start you can start just start anytime because if you are like um if you wait so no time is late but i think the best thing is just start and with um you know with that consistency and um dedication i think those are the key things start and also be consistent okay. um, and um uh, all right and another tip i you could just find someone Inspires you so whenever you feel down, you just go to watch the person. You know, oh, I want to be like this, and like that energy comes back, and like you okay. just keep moving. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. So if you listen to that, just start. Be consistent. Be dedicated. And if the energy falls low, which would happen, look up to somebody who inspires you to continue. So the very last question, um, um, Sumaya, it's been very nice speaking with you. Some of the some of our viewers would like to follow you on social media. So come in, I know the social media platforms you are on and your handle so they can follow you. All right. So um, you can check me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm Sumaya Adivator. But once you just check for Sumidev, that, like, that's the name actually is, uh, you know, this tech name, all right? So Sumidev, you can just check it on LinkedIn. I'm Sumaya Adivator. On Facebook, I'm also Sumaya Adivator. Instagram and Twitter, check me out there. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, Sumaya Adik I mean, it's been nice speaking with you. To be very frank, I've learned a lot. I've gained some insights from my discussion with you. Thanks so much once again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and to everybody who has joined us for today's edition of the program, it's very nice of you to join us. And I hope you've gained one or two things from watching this edition of the program. And just like Sumaya said, if you're watching it and you're thinking of starting software development, just start, be consistent, be dedicated. And if you're discouraged or you run into um, issues, let there be somebody that you look up to, to encourage you. Thanks so much for joining us and looking forward to you joining us for the, our next edition. Please, you can subscribe to our channel so when we drop new editions of the program, You'll be able to watch it. You can also go through our past. Um, um, we have done some editions in the past, so you can go through it and watch it. Thanks so much once again, and bye for now. Bye.